In a previous video, we spoke about the physical signs of Neanderthal DNA and specifically said it could alter the shape of your skull. Well, if it could alter the shape of your skull, surely it would also be able to change what's inside of that skull? Yes, yes it can. But your personality and mental stability are purely the results of your upbringing and environment and experiences in your life. Unfortunately, this is a common belief among people who are not aware of the genetic effects that human DNA would have on our minds, never mind Neanderthal DNA. Our personality and minds are shaped not only by our environment and upbringing, but are hugely affected by the DNA that we contain. Don't believe me? Let's hear from the esteemed Dr. Russell Barkley on the matter. So, what we have learned in the last 20 years of research in neuroimaging, behavior genetics, developmental psychology, neuropsychology can be boiled down to this phrase. Your child is born with more than 400 psychological traits that will emerge as they mature, and they have nothing to do with you. So the idea that you are going to engineer personalities and IQ and academic achievement skills and all these other things just isn't true. Your child is not a blank slate on which you get to write. Take a DNA test and observe the predictions that the DNA test would be able to make on your personality and character. How on earth could something like this be possible? How could a genetic test tell us our personalities and predict so accurately the way we think and how our brain functions? And speaking of DNA tests, Allow me to introduce our sponsor for today, Talmigen, whose test is able to tell you the details of your personality and mental disposition. Wondering how much Neanderthal DNA you have? Talmigen has generously decided to give my viewers a 10% discount on their DNA tests. This is one of the few DNA tests that shows the amount of Neanderthal DNA you have. Being one of the most comprehensive DNA tests out there, they also offer tons of super interesting info relating to your genetic code and can tell you about your paternal and maternal haplogroups, as well as health, pharmacological and nutritional information unique to your DNA. Click the link below and use my coupon Archives of ECNI to get your 10% discount. Anyway, without further ado, let's get back to the video. So. Let's take a look at our first psychological trait inherited from Neanderthals. Being a night owl. If you find yourself going to bed quite late every day, and your natural sleeping pattern is one that is more akin to a vampire than a human, it may be due to your Neanderthal DNA. People with this gene will find themselves likely to go to bed late and want to sleep during the afternoon. The purpose of this gene was probably to allow Neanderthals to take advantage of the long nights and winters in the northern reaches where they lived, and successfully helped hunters to stay out of danger and reduce the risks of braving the outside world unnecessarily. Neanderthal genes may also cause you to become sleepy in the afternoon and be a morning person. What a conflict of behaviors. Well, in some populations with the highest amounts of Neanderthal DNA, it is common to go to bed late, rise early, and nap during the day, such as many East Asian cultures. Propensity for addiction. Do you find yourself smoking cigarettes, gambling, and drinking alcohol more than you should? You might have your Neanderthal ancestors to blame. A gene originating from Neanderthals causes us to have a higher level of addiction and could be the reason for your bad habits. A gene like this probably gave our Neanderthal ancestors a giant dopamine hit in their very high risk, high reward lifestyle, where hunting giant ice age animals with nothing but a sharpened stick was the only way to survive. This dopamine kept them motivated to hunt despite the incredibly daunting task they faced. Depression. Depression is an unfortunate mental disease that affects a very large percentage of the population. And we could blame our Neanderthal ancestors for this. 
If you have this gene, it may make you more likely to present with depression at some point in your life. What's interesting about Neanderthal DNA and depression is that it doesn't only cause depression, but may also prevent depression. It's not a one-sided affair when it comes to depression, but Neanderthal DNA has a significant effect on whether a person will present with depression or not. The genes we inherited from our Neanderthal ancestors are quite diverse, and it's very seldom a cut and dry situation. Protection against schizophrenia. Schizophrenia is one of the scariest mental illnesses out there. And luckily, Neanderthal DNA is quite a potent protection against this disorder. Patients with Neanderthal DNA have been found to have lower instances of schizophrenia. And even those who have schizophrenia will have less severe symptoms if they have higher amounts of Neanderthal DNA. Though not often the case, Quite a sweet deal for us descendants of Neanderthals for once. Anorexia nervosa. Anorexia isn't something anyone would like to have to deal with. This debilitating disease is highly heritable and is affected by our genes in a massive way. Luckily for some of us, Neanderthal genes offer a strong protection against developing anorexia and reduce the chances of developing this condition significantly. Once again, our Neanderthal ancestors looking out for us when it comes to the more serious issues. The more we learn about Neanderthal's behavior and disposition, the more it seems like they were introverted, sad boys, who had addictive personalities and didn't really like crowds. Some emerging data shows people with Neanderthal DNA behave more like them and may also exhibit more introversion, demonstrate less emotional stability, receive less emotional support from others, have a poorer relationship with their father, and report lower religiosity, which is kind of crazy. Delving into the mind of a prehistoric ancestor is fascinating. And in future videos, we will explore the minds of not only our Neanderthal ancestors, but of our homo sapien ones too. We will examine the notion that our prehistoric ancestors may have been far smarter than we are today. And this is the first time that I'm asking this in a video, but if you haven't subscribed to me, consider doing so if you'd like to see more of my upcoming videos, which if all goes well, should be fascinating.